This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hello, hello, there's Jeff Peter Diamond welcoming you to another sports catastrophe birthday boy. And a couple things. A, there's no honest day for May the 8th because I haven't covered anything. But I have it on May the 8th. And B is an apology. When I was doing cross referencing to make sure that I didn't do sports catastrophe birthdays on the same day, like all that, I I wrote a note for May the 8th, which Aki Bono was the guy for the birthday boy. But what happened is I wrote Cower and Lot, Bill Cower for the 8th, making sure that when I came the next year, I do Bill Cower. I did Cower yesterday. Unfortunately, though, I did Bill Cower on the sub, thinking his birthday was the seventh, and all that. And I also screwed up with Willis Reed's moment being from May the third, when it was May the eighth the whole time. But it doesn't matter in the context. What's done is done. I fucked it up. I'm sorry. Anyway, I know that the picture you see is not Bill Cower. It's Johnny Unitas, the legendary Johnny Unitas who was a great quarterback. There was no living players who were alive on May the 7th. So his birthday was May 7th, 1933. So I'm going to tell you about Johnny Nice's career. So anyway, he played 18 years, primarily with the Baltimore Colts franchise. I know Indianapolis didn't come to 84 when he was long retired. He had a great career mark. He had lots of NFL records. He was MVP in 59, 64, and 67. Of the Colts win four championship NFL titles. Well, three before the merger and one in the Super Bowl. Anywho, his first championship victory actually was one of the greatest games of all time and popularized the NFL. He had the most consecutive games with a touchdown pass at 47, which stood for 52 years. He was named to the Hall of Fame in 1979. So he's from Pittsburgh. He joined the University of Louisville and all that. And Unitas was a good quarterback and all that. Unfortunately, though, Louisville did decide to de-emphasize sports in 1952. So that meant that there's no athletic aid and all that. So anyway, Louisville was not really much of a team and all that. Pittsburgh actually drafted him in the ninth round. But with four quarterbacks filling three spots, United was actually out of a job. And the worst part is, among those edging out United was Ted Marchabroda, who was a future NFL head coach. Basically, United worked in construction in Pittsburgh to support his family. On the weekends, he would play quarterback, safety, and punter on a Sammy Pro team for $6 a game. United would join Baltimore. Who, after being asked by the last minute to join fellow Bloomfield lineman Jim DeGlau, a Croatian steel worker with a life much like United's, at the Colts tryout. The pair had to borrow money from friends to pay for the guys to make the trip. Anyway, he had a good practice session, and the Colts say, screw it, we're, we're signing this guy. Cleveland wanted him, too, but anyway, United did not do well in his first game. However, two weeks later, George Shaw, starting quarterback of Baltimore, suffered a broken leg against the Bears. So United came in, but his first pass was interception and was picked off for a pick six. United really ate crap that day. However, he did lead the Colts to an uh, upset over Green Bay and a big win over Cleveland, so it wasn't that bad. United in his first full season as the full-time starter actually finished first in NFL in passing yards 2,500 and touchdowns with 24. You say, oh, that's pretty much pathetic. But remember, this is 1957. The passing game wasn't really invented this way. The Colts were 7-5. And United's got the NFL's most valuable player. First time Baltimore got a winning record. And then 1958 was the year that 
United has proudness. The Colts won the Western Conference and would have to take on the Eastern Conference champion, New York Giants, at Yankee Stadium. Yes, Yankee Stadium had football back then. It was one of the greatest games of all time, if not the greatest game ever played. Giants and Colts went down to the last seconds. They had to go to overtime, and Ellen Michi's goal line plunge clinched it for the Colts. First overtime game in NFL history. Refers to greatest game ever played, and basically credited for sparking the rise in popularity of pro football during the 1960s. NBC would televise this match. Anyway, Unitas was named MVP in 1959. And, you know, his passing yards, yards were much better, helping the Colts do very well for themselves. We Eubank would be fired from Baltimore and replaced by Don Shula, who under Shula, the Colts were just fantastic. The 64 season, the Colts looked good. They were 12 and 10 after 10 straight wins. United looked good, but unfortunately, the Colts sucked when it counted when they were crushed by Cleveland 27 0 in the 1964 NFL Championship game. But the joke's on Cleveland because that's the last time they had a championship conference or NFL was. United still did pretty well for himself. Unfortunately, injuries would ruin him in 1965. And Tom Matte, who quarterbacked at Ohio State but became a running back for the Colts, was the starting quarterback when the Colts and Packers had to play a one-game playoff. In Green Bay to decide who will go to the 65 NFL Championship. The Colts lose to Green Bay, and Green Bay got lucky as the referees made a missed call on a Don Chandler field goal. Because the uprights were so small, they didn't know if it went clearly through the middle and all that. The NFL would change their rules to make the uprights yellow and stretch up higher. You notice still did pretty well and all that. Unfortunately, the Colts, even though the Colts were 11-1-2 and the NFL's best record, ended up not qualifying for the NFL playoff by losing to the Rams. It was like shocking that United that Baltimore was eleven one and two and they couldn't even be in the final four teams for the NFL matchup because of the division format. And all that. United unfortunately would sit out the sixty eight season mostly because of a preseason injury against the Dallas Cowboys. And strangely decided the Colts were thirteen and one without him and had Earl Morrow under center. United did come off the bench to play in the Super Bowl three. Unfortunately, it failed miserably. Even though United did lead them to the only touchdown. The Colts almost made it 16-10, but Shula said, no, we're not going to go for field goal. We're going for the touchdown. He actually had more passing yards than Earl Morrow and didn't botch like Morrow forgetting to see Jimmy Orr wide open in the end zone. United would have elbow issues. I mean, he was getting older. United would, in the 1970-71 season, be the starting quarterback and lead the Colts to the Super Bowl. He took down Cincy and Oakland in the playoffs, and then in Super Bowl five against Dallas in the worst Super Bowl for turnovers in history. He did throw a 75-yard touchdown pass to John Mackey. And Earl Morrow came in to help the Colts kick the winning field goal. Really. Unitas and Morrow would have to split time. All that. Unitas was declining and all that. Morrow actually was released by the Colts and taken by Miami. So yeah, the Colts had issues and all that. United came on the field and did pretty well as the Colts beat the Bills in the final game of the 1972 season. Unfortunately, the Colts thought that United was declining instead of trading to San Diego. There were rumors that future considerations were supposed to come to Baltimore from the Chargers. The obstacle was the personal services contract in 1970. 
which would have kept them employed with the organization. But the Chargers purchased that contract. And United did not want to be with, affiliated with the Colts, so he was eager to sever all ties and all of that. He would be the starting quarterback for the Chargers in place of John Hadle, who actually requested a move to the Rams. United, unfortunately, did not do too well. He was 1-3 in three as a starter, and it was replaced by rookie quarterback at the time, Andrew Jerome Favre, Dan Belt. United would retire before the 74 season. I mean, it's amazing what he did and all that. United should never have played for another team other than the Colts. A one-team one quarterback guy. Anyway, United would settle in Baltimore and did color commentary for NFL games in the 1970s. After Robert Ursay moved the Colts to Indianapolis in the middle of the night in 1984, United said, screw it, I'm not going to be affiliated with the Colts, even, even everything. He said he's a Baltimore Colt for the remainder of his life. His number 19 is still retired by the Colts. And many old-time Baltimore Colts follow this lead and all that. So, anyway, Unitas would ask the Pro Football Hall of Fame on numerous occasions to remove its display uh, unless it was listed as blind to the Baltimore Colts, not the Indianapolis Colts. Unitas won another NFL team to come to Baltimore and all that. After the Ravens were formed after Cleveland moved to Baltimore, he and many of the other Baltimore Colts players would attend the Ravens' first ever game on opening day at Memorial Stadium. And he was seen on the Ravens' sidelines at home games and all that. And he would have a fundraiser association every time and all that. Unfortunately, he was severely hobbled. Due to an elbow injury in his playing career, he had very limited use of his right hand and couldn't perform any physical activity more strenuous than golf due to his artificial knees. Things were archaic back in the day. Well, he ended up 211 games, 118 wins in his career, 290 touchdowns, 253 interceptions. So that wasn't as great as it was. But, I mean, he did help Baltimore out. He had a good legacy and all that. He married his high school sweetheart and had five children before divorcing, and then a second wife. He married in 72. They had three children. All that. Yeah, United lost almost total use of his brain. United was dying from a heart attack while working out a physical therapy session September 11, 2002. There were a lot of people that wanted the Ravens to renamed the Raven Stadium after Unitas, but it failed. However, the Ravens dedicated the front area of the stadium's main entrance as Unitas Plaza. So Unitas had the most Pro Bowl appearances before Brad Favre broke it. He had the original standard for most wins by a starting quarterback with 118, and he's 11th on that mark as of today, which is nice. Louisville never forgot him and all that. His number 16 was the first football number retired by the Cardinals. So yeah, he was good and all that. He had a lot of records and all that. So anyway, Johnny Unitas was an icon for many old school football fans around the world. And he helped popularize football, NFL football, and made it a TV juggernaut. Cha-ching! Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond Adjee.